Right. Um, now the uh, now we're getting into the first, the final lecture of today, which is on dedication, and that is the first uh, optimization model for that we're, I'm going to introduce in this course for risk management in uh, in the bond markets. Right. So now you have uh, learned kind of enough, or or I've introduced you to enough uh, topics that uh, kind of um, prepares us to introduce you to. Uh, the dedication model, which is a risk management uh, model in, in the bond markets. And we start with very simple assumptions, and I'm going to get back uh, next week and, and, and tell you why this, this framework, as we see, it, is simplistic, so you need to, to probably use some other models. You need to bring in a stochasticity, but we start with a simple case of the dedication model to understand the dynamics of what dedication means. How does it work, right? So, um, it's called portfolio dedication. It's, it's a model which is used in, 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 bond, uh, mark, uh, in, in bond markets. And uh, normally, if you were a pension fund, you would be interested in a model like this. So how, how does this work? Let, let's get into kind of the overall idea behind, behind dedication. Um, and it's got two forms. Either um, you want to minimize costs, which is the, the, the first one or you want to maximize your horizon return. Well, let's start by minimizing costs. So essentially what you have here is that you have a, a free budget. So you imagine you work in a pension fund and you were a uh, um, portfolio manager. You get a budget, a free budget, and then you, you're asked, you're given the assignment to minimize that budget. You want to minimize your own budget for, for the sake of um, your, your company. Um, and you want to do it in such a way that you want to dedicate a cash flow of liabilities to a cash flow of, um, of assets that you're, uh, that you're going to have by buying some bonds, right? So you want to, you have some liabilities, that you have a liability stream. And if you were in a pension fund, what is your liability stream? What is liability? Is, is, your, is your cost side, this is what you have to pay out, right? So liability is something that you have to pay back, and your asset side is, is the, the money that you're going to receive. So if you were a pension fund, the problem number one probably that you are concerned with, I mean, of course, you're concerned with you're making some money as a, as a company, but also in terms of risk management, if you were in a risk management position, uh, one of the most important problems you're dealing with is that you want to make sure that you always can pay your liabilities back. Um, but what are those liabilities if you were a pension fund? Back Paying back, that, back, back the uh, policyholders, right? So a, a pension fund is in the business of uh, you pay some premiums as, as policyholders, as is you're saving up to your, <coughs> to your retirement. So you pay the pension fund some money every month. Uh, and then at some point, so then you just pay, you know, in Denmark, somewhere like 15, 16, 17 percent of your salary every month, you pay to a pension fund, and you will do that until you will be uh, somewhere between 65 and, and 70 years old. In your case, probably more like 70 or more. Uh, and then, at the at, from then on, then the uh, pension fund is going to pay you back your money plus some interest rates plus whatever they have actually earned on your money until retirement. So they get the money from you, they want to invest it, hopefully they're going to generate some, some interest, some, some return on investments for your, for your money, uh, and then, then they, you're going to get the money back uh, you know, at in, in over some years. And then there are different products, some of them are life annuities, so, so actually they, you have a guarantee that as long as you live, the, the, the pension fund is going to pay you. And they also have some simpler products, which are simple annuities, so they say, well, we just pay you back in the period between, let's say, 10 and 25 years, and you have to choose how, for, you know, how many years you want to get the money back. You want to get it back in 10 years if you th think you're, well, who's alive after 25? Or you might say, ah, okay, I'll, I'm in good health, and you know, I, I, I bet that I live at least another 20 years, so I'll go for 20 or 25 years. And then if, if I die before that, then the money will go to, to my relatives, say. If, uh, there, there's many times it's, uh, in for, for those products, there's also a guarantee that the money can go to, to, to one's wife or husband or to, to children. All right, so this is essentially the business of a pension fund. But what they want to do, so at any given year, there are some money coming in 
right? And there's some money getting out. And uh, you have to make sure, as the, if you are doing your asset liability management, for that amount that you are paying out, you have to, to make sure that you can buy, you, sorry, you can, you can collectively for the, for, for the pool of money that you have, you want to buy some bonds that are going to pay the liabilities. So in this case, I'm just going to show this one liability to, you know, without losing gen, uh, uh, generality in this case. So I have L2. So let's say there's this one cash flow at time two that I have to pay. And now I want to buy a number of bonds. Uh, they've got a price of P. And here is the sum of P times X. So the price of bonds times um, how much I buy of any given bonds. This is equaling my budget, right? So I'm gonna buy some bonds for a given uh, budget. I don't know exactly what that budget is. I want to minimize that, right? So I want to buy as little, as few bonds as possible in such a way that they're going to pay back my liabilities. And uh, I wanna make sure that I have exactly money enough at time two in this particular example. If I had more liabilities, I have to make sure that I have enough money to pay any of these liabilities. But here, what are my options then? My options are that um, for the bonds I buy here, so I bond a portfolio bo of bonds in the beginning, and they pay some cash flow. They give me, in, in this case, let's say, they, they give me a cash flow at time two, three, and four. F2, F3, and F4. That's the money I receive back. This is the cash flow of my portfolio of bonds. And I have some liability here. And it just so happens that F2 is not quite enough. So the cash flow I receive from from this portfolio is not big enough to pay back the liability at this time. So I allow actually borrowing. So I can, at that time, I can borrow at the, uh, well, for in this particular model, I can borrow it from the bank at the, at the risk-free rate um, plus a premium. So this is going to be expensive money that I'm going to borrow. Make sure that that's gonna be expensive. I, we're gonna get back to how we do it. Um, but I can borrow some money from the bank and put it on top of the cash flow from my bond. Obviously, I want to borrow as little as possible, and that's what my optimization model has to take care of. But with that borrowing, I can pay essentially this liability, right? And uh, then I get some more cash flow, and in this case, I don't have any liability, but now I had borrowed some money, right? So I had borrowed some money, V2 minus. I have to pay that back immediately. As soon as I get back to the money, I want to get rid of that that borrowing in this model because that's expensive. So what's happening here is that I, uh, I have to pay the V2 minus plus the interest rates, plus the risk free rate, plus this delta, which is a big number. This is because I'm actually, when I am borrowing money from the bank, I have to pay a higher interest rate for that, right? Than if I lend the money to the bank. So I have to pay back what I borrowed plus, an inch, plus the risk free rate, plus a margin on top of it. That's, that's this amount that I pay back at time three. Um, well, if the cash flow I get from the bonds was bigger than that, then there's also a chance that I have actually a, a surplus from my cash flow. That, uh, that surplus I'll put into uh, V plus, which is what I call my reinvestment. So I allow, I, it's a dedication model where I have to buy a portfolio of bonds and I allow borrowing from the bank and reinvestment in the bank. And reinvestment in the bank, which is V3 plus, this is what I would uh, actually receive back in this case, and I receive it back with the risk-free rate. So when I reinvest the money, when I actually lend the money to the bank, I only receive RF, which is the risk-free rate, but if I borrow the money from the bank, then I'll pay back the risk-free rate plus a margin on top of it, which could be uh, one or two percent extra. Right? Um, and normally what happens then, if I was minimizing my v null, then my final, my horizon return, what would be a sensible value that the optimization model will have to figure out for that? Zero, why? Right, so because then if, you, if, if there was, you can always, by bringing down, your initial investments, you can just make this smaller and smaller, and finally it gets at zero, you can't get any smaller than that. So, so when I'm minimizing my budget, the, my surplus at the final time would be, would be zero. Um, and then here's uh, the other case, where I'm uh, maximizing my final horizon, so let's say I have a fixed budget, so this is just a simple variations of that. 
uh, if this budget was not free but it was fixed, then this value V plus could be at the final time, it actually could be positive, and that's essentially what I want to maximize for a fixed budget. Um, right? But let's have a look first at the, uh, at the formulation of this model. Um, and one, one thing about this model to, to notice is uh, this balance equation, which is kind of a bookkeeping equation, so I'll, I'll go through that uh, a bit more slowly. Um, here I'm minimizing my uh, initial budget, we know. And um, in, the begin, in the beginning, what we, what we have here is that this F0 is actually the negative of the price of the bond. So maybe we want to take a note of that. So F0, F0i is the negative of the price. And that's normally you have that because, well, you had this cash flow. This was, uh, we call this, this is the price of bond I, or is it the negative of, of the cash flow at time zero, right? In the book, the price of the bond is called essentially the cash flow. I mean, it's, it's just one cash flow. It's just that the price is the, you know, what you, are in, if, if you were the investor, that's what you were, you're paying out. So that would be a negative cash flow for you. And then the, the, the you know, the, the other Fs that you are getting, F1, F2, and so on, those would be the, the positive cash flows, right? So just think of F0i as negative of the price. So this is essentially the price you pay for the bond. And uh, if that was the case, that you, were, you didn't allow any borrowing and any reinvestments in the beginning, then that part essentially means that um, your budget has to be equal the prices multiplied by how much bonds you buy, right? So I could, without, without allowing uh, borrowing and reinvestments at time zero, I could also rewrite that as, as being my V null, which is my free budget, is equal prices of bonds times Xi, right? Um, but then if I allow if I allow borrowing and reinvestments, then I can essentially borrow some money, which I put on top of my budget and I can buy some more bonds, or I don't have to uh, essentially buy uh, for all the money, I can put, it, put some of it just in the bank, right? So that's, uh, that's the, the function of V minus and V plus. What is more interesting here is, the, um, is what's happening uh, in between the two periods. So, so I'm initializing at time zero. I'm essentially buying some bonds for some budget. Um, and then from then on, I have to make sure that there is a balance between my, from, um, in between my asset side and my liability side. So here I have the, the, the asset side. The left-hand side is the, is the asset side, and the right-hand side is the liability side. So what, have we, what we've got there, and here we are starting from time one and up to the final time horizon, which is the capital T, right? So this is essentially the cash flow from the bonds plus what I have reinvested at the time before. So what I, when I reinvest in the, in, in, in the bank, that immediately goes as a liability. The money out of my pocket is, is always as a liability. The money comes back into my pocket. That's my asset side. So I, I have reinvested at time t minus one, but now I'm getting that money back with some interest. And that amount, that goes into the asset side. So the money I received from the bank because I've invested in the bank, plus the money that I actually I borrowed. So when you borrow money from the bank, uh, that actually also goes into your asset side because at the, at the moment where you borrow the money, that's money at your hands, right? So, so then you are uh, parting, right? So you get the money, that's on your, your asset side goes up. Only after that, it turns into liability. So the term after is you have to pay it back. It becomes a liability to you. So your asset side is made up of the cash flow you receive from the bonds, plus the money you get back from your investments, plus the money you immediately receive when you borrow money from the bank. Your liability side is obviously the liabilities that you have to pay, pay back to the... Uh, to the customers of your pension fund, to the policyholders, plus 
at the time where you actually were investing the money, that's money out of your pocket, so that goes into your liability side. You have to invest in the bank. Plus, then if from whatever money you borrowed the term before, that was your assets, now it becomes your liability. You have to pay back the money you borrowed with some uh, risk free rate plus some extra margin on top of it. And finally, you have to explicitly make sure that the, the final borrowing amount is zero. So VT minus is, this is not the plus, the, the, that one, the optimization will make sure that that happens when you're minimizing V null. So V, v plus capital T would be automatically zero, but we have to explicitly make sure that there is no borrowing allowed at the final time, at the horizon. Why, why is that? Why do we have to explicitly ensure that no borrowing is allowed at the final time? Maybe I can show you the this is structure again. What happens if I could borrow at the final time? Yeah. Uh, assume that it's profit, then I know both sides are not liable. Yeah, you have a loan, but the, the question is then, is there w w w if, if if I borrow the money at this at this time, is there a mechanism which ensures that I'll have to pay it back? Infinite, why? Yeah, because I don't have to pay it back, yeah. right? So, so exact, exactly because there is the, the model is, is finite, so that's at, it stops at time four. There is no such thing as time five in this model. If I borrow at any given time, then I have to pay it back one period later. But if I borrow at the very last time period, there is no time later in this model, right? So if I borrow here, then there's no paying back. So, so, so since there is no paying back, then it will just, this, this borrowing will just go up to infinity and the model would be infeasible, right? So, so you have to explicitly make sure that no borrowing is allowed at the horizon. That kind of makes very good sense, right? If you are also a, a, a bank, you know, you don't want to, to uh, lend uh, people, you know, who are approaching their horizon uh, in one way or the other, that you don't want to, to pay, borrow, uh, lend them any more money, right? So that's also, that's, that's true in real life, it's also true in in, in, our, in our modeling here. So that's essentially what this constraint says, right? And then we have in a slight variations of this. It's more or less the same. The only thing we are changing here, we are now maximizing the horizon return, VT plus. Still, they have this, uh, this, this constraint are exactly the same, these two. The only one which has changed here, rather than a V null, which was the free budget, now we have V null, which is the fixed budget. Any questions regarding the dedication model? Right, so we have an exercise uh, with that as well. So for the uh, next two and a half hours, I want you to work with the uh, with bootstrapping. You want to, you have to essentially uh, draw the first uh, term structure of interest rates based on the bond market I've given you, and then I want you to to work with the dedication model as well. All right, so let's take a, a break, a quarter to to three approximately, and then we'll go for the assignments. Yeah.